Ukraine's parliament has adopted a law on increasing the size of the Ukrainian army to 250,000, including 204,000 servicemen. The decision was supported by 270 deputies, while the required minimum is 226. The size of the Ukrainian army at the beginning of 2014 stood at 168,000, including 125,000 servicemen, according to the media. At the end of 2014, the number grew to 232,000. Clearly, a new wave of military mobilization for a peaceful dialogue with the Donbass region is on its way in the Ukraine. The situation in the eastern Ukraine remains difficult, but at least cities are not being destroyed and civilians are not being killed, Russia's President Vladimir Putin said after meeting Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. Putin called on both sides of the Ukrainian conflict to strictly comply with the Minsk peace deal they signed on February the 12th. I am sure that this is an opportunity for a comprehensive peace settlement and direct dialogue between Kiev, Donetsk and Lugansk, he said. We think it is possible if Kiev will stop political dancing and warmongering and start direct dialogue. But it seems the US and some states of the EU don't want it. Weapon supplies to Kiev government will serve the best interests of Europe, head of Poland's National Security Council Stanislav Kozhiesz said. The Polish official believes that weapon supplies will also help slow down the escalation of the conflict. Also on Thursday, Polish Foreign Minister Gregorz Auschwitz was liberated by Ukraine's troops. Szczetina announced that military instructors from his country will be involved in training Ukrainian troops. A short guide about the US-backed strategy of de-escalating the situation in Ukraine. Throw down the legitimate president. Lead to power corruptionists who believe that the country's southeast is full of Russian-speaking subhumans. Offer the public backing to the new regime. Supply money and arms for its war against Russian-speaking subhumans. And involve the EU into it. Crisis is de-escalated. Bingo. The United States has frozen assets of two Russian banks worth some $637 million, U.S. media reported Thursday. Banks controlled by three billionaire friends of Russian President Vladimir Putin have seen about $640 million of assets frozen in the U.S. over the situation in the Ukraine, the Wall Street Journal reported. Hit the hardest is Bank Russia, which had at least $572 million blocked in U.S. accounts, according to records released to the Wall Street Journal by the Treasury Department. That is equivalent to roughly 10% of its 2013 assets at today's exchange rate, the article said. Also hit is SMP Bank, majority owned by Arkady and Boris Rotenberg. Their bank has had at least $65 million, equal to about 2% of 2013 assets, blocked from dozens of accounts in the U.S. financial institutions, Treasury documents show. Both banks are on the list of Russian enterprises and financial institutions the U.S. imposed economic sanctions on. The list also includes Russian state-controlled energy giant Gazprom, Gazprom Neft, Lukoil, Sugut Neftegaz, and Rosneft.